Okay. Uh, thank you, Claire, for the introduction. And uh, thank you all for, for having me. I'm really excited that uh, I get a chance to join you today. Um, can you let me know if the screen sharing works? It's good. All good? Okay, great. Yeah, so um, as um, Claire mentioned, I really would, it's, it's, we can take the opportunity to keep this really interactive. So I have a couple of different sections to introduce your bioimaging, our structure, our basic setup, um, and the, the technology services and um, the training and data services we have in our interactions with industry. And so please feel free at any uh, time point to jump in and ask uh, questions uh, that make uh, as they come up. So um, I'm here to tell you a little bit about, uh, give an introduction to Eurobioimaging, uh, and we are the European Research Infrastructure for Biological and Biomedical Imaging. So what that specifically means is that um, Eurobioimaging is what we call a distributed research infrastructure within Europe. That means we are spread out all across the, the continent. And uh, we consider to have our we consider ourselves to have quite a broad geographic distribution. Although I know compared to the Canadian um, size, this is all still quite um, small and um, compact um, for. But for us, this is we're really spanning most of the continent from Israel to the UK and Portugal up to Finland. Um, and we have uh, as a Eurobioimaging is the landmark research infrastructure for biological and biomedical imaging within Europe. Um, that is according to the European Strategy Forum on Research Infrastructures, or ESFRI. So in the European Union, uh, we do love our acronyms. And this, so I will try and explain some of these acronyms as we go through um, this presentation um, and look at the different structures that are involved here. Um, as a research infrastructure, we are a publicly funded organization, a nonprofit, and we are supported by our 17 member organizations and member states. So these are the countries highlighted on the map in green here. We have 16 countries and EMBL as an intergovernmental organization that are members within the Eurobioimaging ERIC and that um, come together to provide access to imaging services. Um, so the actual access to the imaging services that Eurobioimaging provides happens through our nodes, and this is what we call our collections of imaging facilities. We have in total 35 nodes that are spread across our member states, and our nodes are made up of in, in total 173 different imaging facilities and centers that um, are spread all across Europe, and you can see the sites where they're located marked by the black pins on the map here. And these, uh, to, for a facility to join one of the Eurobioimaging nodes and to become a member of Eurobioimaging requires a rigorous uh, selection process by our scientific advisory board. So our nodes are internationally recognized imaging facilities that provide open access to the Eurobioimaging users. And this means open access both to technologies, but also to their expertise and support. We have uh, we categorize our nodes into either biological imaging nodes, of which we have 17, or medical imaging nodes, of which we have 12. So these are the nodes that really focus on either the biological or the medical spectrum of the imaging technologies. And we also have six of what we call mixed nodes that offer uh, both biological and biomedical imaging technologies, and especially focus on bridging those uh, two ends of the technology of the imaging spectrum. And this is really one of the things that we are paying, paying particular attention to bringing these technologies and these different communities together um, under one umbrella uh, to, to really provide imaging across scales. So this is a sort of a very brief overview of sort of key facts and figures of your bioimaging. But before we get um, into some of the more practical things that we actually do, I want to tell you a bit about um, Eurobioimaging structure and the uh, general European landscape of research infrastructures. So you may have noticed that on the, the first slide um, that Eurobioimaging is officially called Eurobioimaging ERIC. Uh, so the, the common question is, what is an ERIC? Um, ERIC stands for European Research Infrastructure Consortium. And this is a specific legal uh, form that is established within the European uh, Union to uh, by the European Commission specifically for the purpose of providing access to research infrastructure services um, on a non-economic basis. 
So we are not, these are not companies and these have, and, and the ERICs have a specific legal uh, format that is uh, developed on this European level. And to, that means that to officially become an ERIC, um, what makes you officially an ERIC is the publication of the statutes within the journal of the European Commission, uh, of the European Union here. And you can see here the first the title shot of this uh, publication of the Eurobioimaging statutes uh, that was uh, from November, 2019. So this also tells you that we are still a fairly young organization in this official form. So we've been existing uh, since at the end of 2019. Of course, in the, the formation process of uh, research infrastructure, especially in this legal form, is a long process that started for Eurobioimaging specifically in 2009. So it was about a 10-year process before um, we reached the official legal status of an ERIC. And since then, we've been operating um, under this legal uh, status. Eurobioimaging is far from being the only research infrastructure within Europe. The European Strategy Forum for Research Infrastructure has a large number of research infrastructures uh, that are included under its umbrella. In the life science area specifically, we have 15 different research infrastructures that have the ERIC status. Uh, and you see here um, the logos and they really cover a very different fields of uh, life sciences. Um, so this reaches from plant biology uh, that was emphasis does to marine biology, MBRC, structural biology, pathogens, mouse models, uh, biological data services, biobanking, translational medicine, clinical trials. So really covering a very broad scope of uh, different services and support. What unites all these research infrastructures is that their services are open to all scientists and that they provide support and services. But other than that, this is quite a diverse group of institutions with different topic areas, different sizes, different business models. Research infrastructures um, in Europe are either also distributed like Eurobioimaging spread across the continent, but they are also single-sided infrastructures that are larger scale institutions. And the types of access the infrastructures provide can also vary widely. Eurobioimaging, we provide both physical and remote access to imaging technologies, but there's also infrastructures that, for example, provide just remote access, just virtual access, or consultation access. So um, this is really a quite broad uh, range of service delivery as well. And of course, in addition to the life sciences, there are also research infrastructures in many other uh, fields, um, environmental physics, um, such as CERN, um, or the Astronomy Observatory, the European Southern Observatory, and research infrastructures also in the social sciences. So this is really a general um, model within the European Union that um, is extended to all domains of research. So um, this is um, just where we already I showed you the, the basic setup for Eurobioimaging. Um, and I wanted here to stress that our we are distributed research infrastructure where the services are provided by our 35 nodes, uh, but the coordination and the organization of the of Eurobioimaging as an in, as an institution is also distributed across three countries or three sites within Europe. Uh, we have so we have this uh, distributed model both in our service centers at the nodes as well as in our hub in the organizational structure. Um, our hub is actually located between um, Finland, um, Heidelberg in Germany, and Italy, uh, Torino. And this is also reflected in our overall structure, which is this tr tripartite structure of Eurobioimaging with our director general um, at the statutory seat in Finland, and then a section both for the biological imaging, what we call the biohub that is hosted at EMBL, and that's where I work uh, with the section director, Antje Kepler, and our MedHub, which is responsible for the medical imaging side, which is hosted at the University of Torino in Italy uh, under the leadership of Linda Giovanna as the section director for the MedHub there. These three sites work closely together as a unified um, structure, but each of them has separate roles and responsibilities. The um, legal seat in Finland organizes, has the hub offices and is the legal and financial representative and organizes the affairs and such. They also run our uh, web portal and the uh, access services and are responsible for quality control and evaluation. 
The sections for biological and biomedical imaging manage the user access and user consultation for the respective imaging technologies and provide strategic support for our uh, facility communities. The Eurobioimaging Biohub also hosts the general data services for Eurobioimaging as well as the communications. As an official legal structure, Eurobioimaging um, has a um, setup of regulatory bodies. So in addition to the directorate, which is the executive body of Eurobioimaging, we have the Eurobioimaging board, which is made up of delegates of our member countries. And that is the official um, final decision-making body within Eurobioimaging that uh, decides on the direction of the organization and um, controls the, the, the future of what we do. Uh, we have a central body is also our panel of nodes that these are the representatives of the facilities that are members of Eurobioimaging. And because of course the facilities are where the service delivery actually happens, the panel of nodes plays a crucial role in our organization. We also have an international scientific advisory board that consults both the board as well as the director directly. And we have an industry advisory panel uh, that is made up by the members of the Eurobioimaging industry board to um, bring the um, opinions and concerns of the industry partners within the industry board to the Eurobioimaging Directorate. As a general concept um, for in terms of how Eurobioimaging is set up and funded, the, we are taking advantage of the already existing national imaging centers at our nodes and facilities that are supported by national funding and local and regional support and that then provide through additional increased capacity, uh, European access through Eurobioimaging at each of these individual centers all across Europe. And that means by bringing together all these national imaging communities and the national centers of excellence, by adding just a little bit of additional funding and organization on top of this through Eurobioimaging, we can provide a platform for imaging excellence all across Europe that makes this, these technologies of the National Centers of Excellence available to all researchers in a more democratic way and allows um, more impact for the national centers and the national communities. And at the same time, we're also interlinking these national communities um, to each other and uh, increasing the knowledge sharing between the individual centers. And to be quite specific on our funding and support structure, the Eurobioimaging hub, the core funding comes from our member states, but we also have significant third party funding that mostly comes from the European projects. So these are grants that we apply for from the European Commission. And our nodes and imaging facilities and the funding for their staff and instrument comes from a wide variety of sources from university and national third party and European funding. But as Eurobioimaging, we do not directly provide funding um, for either staff or instruments to our facilities. Uh, this happens indirectly through the national funding. And for this national funding for the individual centers and facilities in the countries, the joint lobbying that we can provide through Eurobioimaging is absolutely critical. And Eurobioimaging membership is one of the reasons that uh, many national communities uh, receive funding from their governments, because we can jointly ensure that imaging stays on the national roadmaps uh, for investment in research. And this is one of those, um, maybe a, so the European concept of the national roadmaps for funding priorities. Uh, within the sciences. And so we really um, ensure that imaging stays on top of everybody's minds there and that funding is um, through that then available at the national level for our centers. And this to the member countries then uh, benefits everyone who is a member within Eurobioimaging and uh, brings these, pools these resources together on the European level. And Although our member states um, are, and the facilities within Eurobioimaging have to be located in our member states, our services and the facilities um, within Eurobioimaging are open to all researchers, so from anywhere in the world. So it doesn't have to be from within Europe or from within one of the member states. We are also open to researchers both from academia as well as from industry. And we are open to any career stage, area of expertise or research, and uh, we 
particularly serve a lot of early career researchers and provide uh, training and support um, through our nodes to build the skills of the researchers. So um, at this stage, if there are any questions on sort of the more conceptual and organizational structure, um, I'd be happy to take them. Otherwise we can move on to the, talk a little bit about user access and how we organize that. Um, can I ask a question? Yes, please go ahead. I'm just curious, like on the maps that you showed, there seemed to be some notable countries that were not participating in the same way, like Germany, if I'm getting my European geography right. Yes, yes. And Spain and Switzerland. And then you still include the UK and also Israel. So that seems to be an expansion of Europe in my mind right now. I'm just curious about that dynamic. Yes, absolutely. So um, there's maybe this sort of, there's, there's two separate ones. Maybe I'll take the um, extra European side uh, first. So with the UK and Israel, for example. Um, so while the, the ERIC, so the Research Infrastructure Consortium, is a European uh, model that's based on the European Union, the member states do not have to be members of the European Union, which is quite lucky for us because that meant that, for example, the UK that has been a member of Eurobioimaging um, since the preparatory phase um, could even after Brexit, after leaving, leaving the European Union, uh, stay a member of uh, Eurobioimaging and of other research infrastructures. Um, so in theory, um, member states can also come from even outside the European continent. So this is um, the core of the member states um, has to come from within Europe, but additional members from outside are possible. The question on uh, the notable gray spots on the map is, um, again, is a political decision. So each country uh, makes the political decision to join or not join the research infrastructures. And um, for the cases specifically of Germany and Spain, this is um, these are sort of historically and politically based decisions on funding priorities within the sciences um, in those countries and how much they want to participate on the European level and making their, their, their services and their facilities available in open access. And uh, Switzerland is for other political reasons, um, not normally members uh, in uh, infrastructures because of their specific um, non-membership in the European Union and other specific legal considerations there. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Okay, if that's not the case, then I will switch over to the next topic, which is um, talking a bit about uh, user access. So all user access to Eurobioimaging happens through our Eurobioimaging uh, website. And this is where users um, centrally find our technology portfolio. And we have a very broad and wide ranging technology portfolio in biological and biomedical imaging that ranges from uh, methods for sample characterization, such as mass spectrometry imaging, atomic force microscopy, micropixie, attraction force micros microscopy, um, through the electron microscopy area, both cryo electron microscopy as well as volume EM and associated methods, and all the light microscopy methods from super resolution and functional imaging up to mesoscopic imaging for large samples, intravital microscopy in living animals, high content screening for genomic uh, knockouts, feedback microscopy, spatial transcriptomics, et cetera. So the light microscopy really is sort of our largest area and group of technologies. And as I already mentioned, we really focus on correlative methods that bring together um, these different technologies, particularly between the light and electron microscopy. And we offer on the preclinical imaging side, a wide variety of services from micro MRI, micro PET, PET spec, uh, CT, uh, photoacoustic imaging, and then also clinical imaging for uh, humans. So from MRI, PET, PET CT to uh, magnetoencephalography, and um, then what our newest service that we are particularly excited about is that we also offer image data analysis as a standalone service. And that is of course, if you're a little bit on the side because it is a 
technology that spans all other um, areas of imaging and is one of the critical requirements for modern day uh, imaging to uh, really analyze and make use of the data that is gathered there. And what we now offer is that uh, we can not only provide image analysis and image data services for data that is gathered within neurobioimaging, but also for external data. So users can come to us with their data that they've gathered either at a different facility or at their own laboratory, at their own microscope, and receive the support uh, to develop image analysis solutions for their specific scientific problem. So this is our technology portfolio, and that is all available in open access to the Eurobioimaging users. Um, on our website, users can select either based on a technology or the node that they want to visit, and then um, submit an application. We also uh, very centrally offer consultation services where we help users find the right technology or the right node to visit based on the specific research question that uh, they are working on. And this makes the services really accessible also for people who don't have a microscopy background or maybe want to test new methods and we can provide the support in finding the right methods. Following this in initial consultation step, if it is needed, the user submits um, an application through the Eurobioimaging website. This access request can then receive scientific advice if the user requests this. And it can and receive and it definitely receives technical uh, advice from our nodes that evaluate whether this is a service that they can provide, or we then, if this is not the case at a particular node, we work with the user to find the right technology or find another node that will be able to provide the services that they're looking for. So it is really our aim that every user that has a research project that needs imaging support we will find a solution for them within the Eurobioimaging network. Once the, uh, once the technology application request is approved, then the service provision uh, can take place. In most of the cases, uh, this means that the user is visiting the imaging facility, but we also offer remote services um, as well as virtual uh, services spe specifically for the image analysis. And here, just seeing a map of uh, some of the access uh, movement between different countries from our preparatory phase. So you can see um, both international users um, from outside of Europe coming in as well as the cross European uh, movement that is supported by Eurobioimaging. To maintain our technology portfolio, uh, we have a defined process because this is of course one of the crucial um, goals of the organization as imaging technologies are constantly evolving and new technologies are becoming available. We want to make sure that we're always able to offer the latest technologies uh, to our users, but at the same time, the technologies have to be stable enough that a user can just come and visit the facility for a couple of days or a week and get the results that they need from this. Uh, to achieve this, we have a multi-step process in which we are constantly um, soliciting um, and finding information about new technologies through both an online survey as well as interactions with the community. These new technologies then go through what we call a showcasing process uh, by, that can be done by any imaging facility. And in showcasing, the technology has to, it has to be shown that the technology um, has an operational access model. That means it can work in open access and that there's user requests and user needs for a particular technology. Once the showcasing is um, concluded, the technology can go into what we call proof of concept study stages at the Eurobioimaging nodes, in which the technology is made available under the for users to apply to. And in this case, in this phase, the open access to this technology is tested and evaluated, and that means we collect particularly um, user feedback from and as well as the facility feedback on how the service delivery happens. After the proof of concept study is concluded, um, the technologies are evaluated by the Europe Bioimaging Scientific Advisory Board before they then become officially approved and become one of the official technologies in our portfolio. So this is how we provide user access to different imaging technologies and how we maintain our technology catalog. 
The next part I wanted to talk about is uh, funding for user access, because while we say provide open access to imaging technologies, that does not mean that it is free access. Because as I mentioned in the beginning, Europe Imaging does not directly provide funding to the facilities that are participating. That also means that the users that come in through Eurobioimaging um, in most cases have to pay uh, fees to the facility to you to get access to the to the to technologies because the facilities have to uh, pay their staff have to pay the instruments. But of course, this is one of the limiting factors. And so as Eurobioimaging as an organization, we uh, try to find potential a lot of different potential funding mechanisms for our users. We have collected on our website um, both European, national, and regional um, funding opportunities, both governmental as well as third-party um, funding opportunities. And access to research infrastructures is an eligible cost in European grants, as well as in many national grants. So users can apply with the support of Eurobioimaging to receive funding from the European Commission or from their national governments through the research programs to get access to the infrastructure services. And at the same time, Eurobioimaging uh, is itself applying for grants through, from the European Commission to have funding that we can then redistribute to the users um, for their particular research projects. We have also from our core funding in the past year, done a pilot user access call in which we um, had 50,000 euros of funding available um, and solicited which, from which we could fund 10 different projects. This was a highly successful call with, um, you can see here the different the number of different applications we got uh, from different countries. And you can see, of course, uh, a lot of applications from within Europe, but also um, international applications. And 75% of the requests that we got were for transnational access. It means for people coming to a different country to access the imaging technologies. Out of the 85 applications we received, we selected the uh, 10 um, highest evaluated um, projects that really covered a very broad range of different um, topics from plant biology to oncology, developing new methods for imaging and uh, reflecting the breadth of the different uh, the researchers, re research that is supported by Eurobioimaging. And uh, we have, of course, many nice example stories. And here I wanted to pick uh, one that is actually somebody from Canada who uh, had the um, chance to benefit from the Eurobioimaging Pilot User Access Fund, um, a user from uh, the user University of Calgary who visited the Bordeaux Imaging Center that is part of the French Bioimaging Node within Eurobioimaging. The research project targeted uh, the pro the process of focal excitotoxic injury uh, that is spreading through the brain after a stroke and um, can exas exasperate the impact that a stroke has in the brain by killing more uh, of the neurons in the brain tissue. And um, the goal of this research project was to for the, for the researcher, for Andrew, to learn the a technique that's called SUSHI or super resolution shadow imaging that was developed at this uh, facility within France. And um, he went there to the lab that originally pioneered the technique to learn this method, um, to get, gather some data, but particularly to get the expert training that he then brought back to his own university um, and is uh, setting up in his lab uh, there to continue and build on his research um, using this method. So this is showing both the, um, the possibility of gathering actual data through a Eurobioimaging visit, but particularly also the aspect of gathering, uh, getting training and gathering expertise in, in new imaging technologies. Can I ask another question? Yes, please. So in terms of the sushi technique, um, is that something that went through the process that you mentioned previously to be approved as a technique that was part of the Eurobioimaging portfolio? Yes, yes. So this okay. is um, it is a as it is a sub technique of an of an established technology that we have in the portfolio. Okay. Yes. Um, we also have a number of national funding opportunities that um, 
are available. And um, here I want to particularly highlight the um, Italian uh, fund that has been a really success story here. I'm highlighting one particular model in which uh, researchers are supported by their national ministry through Eurobioimaging. So this is a fund by the Italian Ministry of Universities and Research. And that is because it is funded by the national government dedicated to two specific groups of researchers. The first is Italian researchers that are going to a different Eurobioimaging facility outside of Italy. They can receive uh, some support. And then the other is for researchers from different countries coming to Italy to use uh, one of the many imaging facilities in Italy that are part of uh, Eurobioimaging. And uh, through that, bringing in um, expertise and um, use of the uh, Italian facilities within Eurobioimaging. And this has been a very successful project that has supported um, by now 15 different user projects, both in biological and biomedical imaging. It has had real international uh, draw bringing researchers to Italy from uh, nine different countries. Um, and here is, for example, um, an example story for this, that um, a user from Switzerland, from Zurich, from the University of Zurich, who visited the facility in Milano for a very long-term um, multi-year process on studying um, using 3D tomographic uh, electron microscopy, um, looking at the childhood uh, disorders um, that, um, that affect the, the brain. So this is here um, some of the, the example data and that has been supported by the, uh, the, your, the specifically the Italian Access Fund. I mentioned a little bit before that through, uh, as Eurobioimaging, we're also always applying for, uh, as ourselves, for funding opportunities for the European Commission that we then um, have uh, funding that we can provide to the users, to the researchers um, on different topic areas. And we have uh, at the moment, three different projects that we are involved in on the European level that bring together different research infrastructures to provide support for researchers in different topic areas of priority for the European Commission. The first project on this is a pandemic response project uh, that is targeted specifically at COVID-19 and more generally at infectious disease preparedness. And to that, um, we provide um, open access to imaging technologies in, in, for researchers in working in these fields. And then we have a project on cancer uh, under, underscored by the EU beating cancer mission and a project on agroecology, which is uh, focusing on the transition to sustainable agriculture and addressing climate change impacts. So you can see that these funding opportunities here, they're really structures around these big uh, priority areas um, that are driven by uh, the, polit uh, the political side of this. And through these projects, we can then provide researchers access to the Eurobioimaging nodes. Um, and this access is then for free to the researchers and they get uh, support for the consumable costs, for the access fees, for travel uh, costs to the facilities to um, allow them to push their research in these different domains forward um, and help them uh, get uh, results through access to instruments that they wouldn't otherwise be able to access. And I want to specifically highlight here the currently ongoing calls within the infectious disease project called Isidore, because there we have currently ongoing calls that are open for everyone. So that means also for researchers from Canada. So if you know anybody who is working in the infectious diseases domain, either on COVID-19, other respiratory pathogens, but also parasites and vector-borne pathogens. Um, imaging services are open to them. You can apply uh, through Eurobioimaging for this, um, but these projects also bring together a lot of different of the different infrastructures in the life sciences. So there's also a number of different services that are available from chemical screening, structural biology, biobank samples, vaccine development support, um, so really there's a very broad range of services all around infectious diseases research that's available uh, for funding. Um, so if you're interested in this, um, have a look at the Isidore project um, or through the Eurobioimaging website if you want more information on that. So this is the uh, last part on uh, funding for users. Um, if there's any questions on this topic in particular, I'd be happy to uh, take them now. Otherwise, we can move on to the next section. I have um, just a question on sort of the timeline. So 
um, if somebody applies for access or wants to apply for this kind of funding, what's the sort of timeline between the initial outreach to when you know they could visit a facility and do the work? Yeah, so there's um, there's sort of like two two sections of timeline here. I think that um, for these open calls, it's a, it depends a bit on the project. For Isidore, for example, the uh, projects are evaluated on a rolling basis. So the user submits an application, it goes through scientific review, uh, gets evaluated, and then can be approved within sort of three to four weeks, depending on how long the scientific review takes. Um, for some of the other projects, there'll be a three month, uh, every three months, there'll be evaluation. So um, there'll be regular deadlines for people to submit their projects. After a project is approved, how long it then takes to start the access is really a negotiation between uh, the user and the facility. So because we have such a large network, we try and ensure that the facilities that the users apply for have capacity to take on the user projects within a reasonable time frame. But from experience, we actually know that a lot of the time it is on the user side that there are then delays and there's often uh, you know troubleshooting that needs to take place. So it's a continuous process of then after the project is approved, the facility being in conversation with the users, helping them set up the visit, uh, test out things, make sure that you know before they come visit, they actually have everything lined up. Um, so it's, it really varies a lot. We have some users and some facilities that are very prepared that um, you know the access happens two weeks after the project is approved or it starts after the project is approved. Um, sometimes it takes six months. Um, so it can be a really long process. And this is especially true for all the research that of course involves animals. Um, the, so the preclinical imaging research where first you have to get you know, permissions for from the local ethics committee and especially if you're moving animals um, across national borders. This is a, a whole other um, bureaucratic and administrative process that there really you have to uh, plan um, in the time for in, in these, looking at these timelines. Great, thank you. Okay, uh, if there are no other questions, then I can move on to our training section. So, Training at Eurobiomaging falls into a couple of different um, approaches. The first and central approach for us is the actual access training. So the training that happens in the process of accessing the technology. And that can be hands-on training or actual remote training in the case of remote access on the equipment use that is done by our facility experts. And this is one of the key ways in which, uh, especially early career researchers, gain skills through using uh, Eurobiomaging services through really getting practical hands-on knowledge of how to use uh, the imaging machines. The Eurobiomaging nodes also run a, a large number of training courses. Um, there's more than 50 different ones every year that focus on a wide range of topics. You can see this here, sort of tracked a couple of the, the highlighting the different topics that are the areas of focus. And these really courses really range um, all the way from being really beginner courses, introductory courses, to very specialized um, uh, hands-on courses that provide really detailed technical knowledge. And we facilitate um, access to these training courses that are organized by the Eurobiomaging nodes by making our, our user community um, aware of them and spreading the word about these training opportunities. Um, we, of course, okay, there we go. Also collaborate closely on when it comes to training with Global Bioimaging, which is the global network um, for imaging infrastructures. And I'll come uh, some more detail on Global Bioimaging later on. But uh, Global Bioimaging provides training courses for uh, core facility staff. So this is one of the key um, ways in which um, imaging core facilities can receive uh, training. Uh, there's an international job shadowing and a staff exchange program for imaging facility staff um, through Global Bioimaging. And Global Bioimaging has an online training resource with, uh, for self-paced learning on a wide variety of different topics. So this is all targeted at, at imaging technologies. Within Eurobiomaging, we're also specifically targeting um, master's programs. So many of our nodes are... Um, located at universities that and do, therefore do a lot of teaching, particularly in master's programs that are dedicated to imaging um, as an overall technology. 
So we're collaborating closely with a number of ma different master's programs at your biomaging nodes. And through, as part of our mission, we are trying to support student mobility and exchange between these master's programs, and especially also working with uh, the Eurobiomaging industry board through our um, industry uh, pilot program of, for, of, um, of internships for um, master students in industry, where we've just now concluded this pilot um, with the first um, students from a master's program within one of the Eurobiomaging nodes successfully placed and concluded um, a master's uh, internship within uh, some of the Eurobiomaging industry board members. And with that, actually, now I've mentioned the Eurobiomaging industry board, I will uh, jump a little bit and um, talk specifically about our industry interactions um, in some more detail. So the Eurobiomaging industry, industry board is an independent body from Eurobiomaging. It has its own organizational structure and it's coordinated by uh, my colleague, Claudia Pfander. Uh, the Eurobiomaging industry board brings together a, a number of companies, particularly on the manufacturer side, that um, produce microscopes or microscope associated equipment such as cameras and lasers. Um, but and these are both um, the large scale companies that are the sh main share of the microscopy market, but also many smaller companies that provide produce um, either equipment or other um, parts that are associated with um, imaging. The goal of the industry board is centrally to create um, a platform for cross collaboration between the different companies and the Europe by imaging nodes. And of course, for the members of the industry board, these, this interaction with the node community offers an opportunity to understand the research needs and the facility viewpoint um, for, from this broad and diverse European uh, base. We are um, cooperating between the Eurobiomaging nodes and the industry board um, in organizing training activities and developing new technologies. And it has been since the beginning of Eurobiomaging, the industry board has one, been one of the key supporters that uh, in advocating and lobbying for the importance of open access infrastructure um, and Eurobiomaging in particular. So these kind of one voice activities to promote the importance of imaging to policymakers and to governments all across Europe have been one of the central ways in which we've worked closely together with uh, the, the industry on the Eurobiomaging industry board. Uh, training and joint events are really a central um, part of what we organize uh, together between uh, with the Eurobiomaging industry board. So we have um, workshops that are organized by the industry board around specific topics that bring together the industry board representatives and the Eurobiomaging node community for exchange around these topics. We organize joint uh, virtual activities and community events as well as um, other interactive formats. And we have, for example, also a special seminar series where the different companies, both from the Eurobiomaging industry board and beyond present uh, with, uh, to the Eurobiomaging facility community on the latest technology developments to uh, ensure that the community is up to date on what is developed. And this, this is especially a great forum for smaller companies to highlight their latest developments that don't otherwise maybe have the platform to reach this broad um, uh, spectrum of different imaging facilities. Um, are there any questions on this part? If that's not the case, then I'd move on to talking um, in, I think, quite some detail. I'm going to go into quite some detail on the image data side, because this is one of our key areas of focus, because Image data is one of the key challenges and one of the key opportunities of modern imaging. Modern imaging technologies produce vast amounts of data and to make this them um, understandable and to make the gathered data really impactfully used, um, analyzing image data and handling image data properly is one of the key um, challenges. And so as that, your imaging has a number of uh, different approaches and different things that we're doing in the image data space. The first part of it is the image data analysis service. And I already talked a little bit about this um, when we talked about our different uh, technologies that are on offer. So through our network of nodes, we provide image data analysis as a service, both on 
uh, data that is acquired at the nodes, as well as on standalone data that the users bring to the Eurobioimaging nodes. And the support the, the users can receive really ranges from getting access to dedicated um, analysis workflows that are developed at a node, up to specific consultation to define the right solutions and development of novel analysis pipelines together with the, the users. So these are the um, sort of the practical services that are happening at our nodes, and many of our nodes are also centrally involved in developing uh, new open source image analysis tools, and we make sure that these are shared and av available to the community. As such, Eurobioimaging also provides uh, the support in this networking between these different tool developers. We also centrally at Eurobioimaging uh, drive tool development for cloud computing and data sharing. Uh, this happens uh, through um, some work with uh, developing an imaging server on the Galaxy platform for uh, cloud computing. We have a remote desktop solution that was developed by Eurobioimaging that allows people to remotely access um, large scale compute capacity uh, through um, a remote connection to, to analyze their data on a, a cloud server. And one of our key um, focus areas is supporting fair image data. So this is one of the key priority areas within Europe to make the image, the, the all scientifically produced data fair. So findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable and make it available through uh, in, in the open science modality, specifically through the European Open Science Cloud. We uh, specifically provide a support for open image data repositories where researchers can uh, place their post-publication image data free of charge and get support uh, to put the data there and to curate and um, annotate their data. Specifically, we're mostly working with the bioimage archive which takes all different types of imaging data, um, as well as with Empire, which is dedicated for electron microscopy and added value databases, such as the image data resource, the IDR. Eurobioimaging also has a fair image data steward, which offers uh, user support for data verification to the user. So helping users collect the correct metadata, annotate the data properly and share it with the open uh, repositories. The submission of image data to these open repositories requires a multi-step workflow and we are involved in a number of different uh, places in, in this workflow along with the, the wide imaging community. Specifically, we're working uh, through project support through different European projects, both on developing tools for um, transferring the proprietary image data formats that come from the microscopes into a standard cloud compatible file format, specifically the OME ZAR format, that is an accepted community standard. And to make sure that the metadata is correctly um, associated with this data transition, we developed um, its cloud compatible image analysis workflows that can then work on these uh, OME ZAR files, specifically in a cloud computing format. And we make sure that this data is then shared through the open and uh, fair data archives, such as the Bioimage Archive. At the same time, in the data space in, in Europe, there's a lot of things that are uh, currently happening and where we as Eurobioimaging see one of our important roles in representing image data within the whole field of the scientific data domain. Because it is still often that when it comes to discussions around scientific, especially life science data, the first and often only consideration is genomic data, sequence data. But of course, the life sciences uh, research produces a wide variety of different data types and imaging is one of the most rapidly growing uh, data types and provides just very large volumes of data. Within Europe, we have what is called the European Open Science Cloud, which is a big uh, concept is uh, underpinned by funding from the European uh, Commission to um, make all data um, that comes from research accessible and open and provide the necessary storage and compute capacity. And in this first phase, this the Open Science Cloud is targeted towards the research community 
But in the longer run, it is also meant to target both the academic as well as the private and uh, public um, communities and really make data, this build this big European uh, data platform that spans across all uh, fields. Uh, but of course, this is a big um, undertaking and there's a lot of different things that need to be um, developed and protocols and standards that need to be developed on how to share data within this, um, this infrastructure, within the European Open Science Cloud and making this data accessible. So your bioimaging is a, a member of the EOSC Association and number of different task forces there that are both looking at the technical side, but also centrally we're interested in researcher recognition in the open science framework because of course, this is one of those things that we the researchers are asked more and more to do just for free in addition to their existing work. And uh, one of the key questions is how do we make sure that open science contributions are correctly recognized and thereby also encourage people to drive and to contribute more to the open science. We are at the same time also involved as Europe Imaging in a number of different European projects that are all around data and making this data, putting this data from different fields into the European Open Science Cloud. And one of the key targets here is both metadata standardization across different domains and data compatibility. So the ultimate uh, dream and goal of uh, these projects is that there's consistent data and metadata formats and interoperability from you know, particle physics, um, all the way through life sciences into the social sciences and making all these data sets uh, so that they can talk to each other and they can be cross-analyzed. And we are here really representing both the biological and the biomedical image data, with a specific focus on the medical image data, because of course, when it comes to open, making data openly available and sharing data, um, this is a particular concern around medical data, uh, medical image data, where one has to be um, particularly develop, careful in developing uh, ways to safely uh, share patient data, to take advantage of all the open science um, possibilities while maintaining and ensuring that the data is kept safe and anonymized properly. And at the same time, we're also coordinating with a number of international community initiatives all around the data space that ranges from uh, the work in cryoplemy, the initiative for quality and standards in light microscopy that has a large focus on metadata gathering through the Global Bioimaging Working Group on Image Data Management and working together also with the Bioimaging North America, BINA community, and their data working group because there's so much activity happening in this data space, in the image data space, um, all around the world. And it's one of the key uh, things to ensure that the developments are all synergistically working together. There's not a divergence of different standards and that we're not wasting um, effort by duplicating work unnecessarily. So this coordinating and interlinking is one of the key functions that we as an infrastructure can fulfill. And I also want to spend a, just a little mention on our um, latest project in the data space, which is all around artificial intelligence and machine learning. So this is a very exciting project that we are coordinating and running as your bioimaging that brings together and is really meant to bridge between the life science community and the computer science community to make um, artificial intelligence and machine learning more accessible to all life scientists um, to help them analyze and better make use of their image data. So we've seen in the recent years uh, development of a number of fantastic AI models that are available, for example, through the Bioimage Model Zoo at bioimage.io that can do incredible things in analyzing image data, improving image data, reducing um, background noise. Um, but a lot of these things are not accessible to uh, normal researchers that do not have a computer science background or don't have access to GPU uh, compute capacity. And so this project really aims at making these tools um, accessible and available to the community and connecting the researchers from the life sciences with the computer science, uh, science experts. So I think this is um, this was a little excursion into um, image data side. Um, your imaging has an uh, entire team dedicated to um, image data and metadata questions. Um, that uh, supports um, our community um, 
and the, the interacts works together with the global community. You can see the uh, folks on the team here. Are there any questions around uh, image data or the data initiatives? Uh, if that's not the case, then I will, um, I think as the one of the closing points touch on a little bit um, our efforts around um, community building and communications. So, because while of course our central goals and missions as your bioimaging is to provide access to technologies, access to image data services and training, we are also centrally a community organization that brings together um, both on the facility side, facility and technical experts all across Europe, as well as a broad user community. And that means uh, communications and spreading the word and making people aware of the opportunities within neurobioimaging and within the imaging wider imaging community is one of our key um, efforts. We have a fantastic communications officer, uh, Mariana, who spearheads all of these uh, different initiatives that we have in this field. Um, and this includes um, things like our regular newsletter campaigns, a lot of social media work uh, to connect the community. But I particularly want to highlight some of our regular events that we've been running. And a lot of these events arose um, during the pandemic, but we've been and in these virtual formats, but we've been uh, really keeping them going even now that uh, in-person events are happening again. And they've been a great tool to bring together the, uh, the whole imaging community across Europe. So we run a weekly seminar series that takes place every Friday at 1 p.m. I know that is very early for you, but this event is also open to everyone and everyone is warmly uh, invited to join us for this. It's really uh, targeted at educating um, everyone on the latest technology developments in both biological and biomedical imaging, and really a great way of bringing the entire community together on a very regular basis. We really cover a broad range of different topics. And here you can just see our uh, calendar for well, January and February now. And so our topics range from uh, latest technology developments, image analysis, specific uh, methods, funding programs, and user stories. So really a broad range of different uh, talks that uh, topics that we cover in this weekly seminar. We also organize regular larger scale event, virtual events. So twice a year, we organize the Eurobiomaging User Forum that is always focused on a specific research topic. Sorry, excuse me. Um, the uh, upcoming user form that's gonna take place on March 21st is dedicated to cardiovascular research. And we've covered in the past topics such as cancer, neuroscience and infectious diseases really different topics and we always had these user forums have the keynote speakers and then um, give us a lot of space and time to presentations from the Eurobioimaging users and from the facilities that support them because we want to highlight the impact imaging has in these different research areas but also centrally give a space to the facilities that support the research to become visible um, and not just in the acknowledgement sections of a paper but really also get a share of the presentations of the work um, here. So this next event is taking place on 21st of March. It's again, um, all our community events are open to everyone. Um, you can register for this. It's a virtual event um, using the QR code here on the slide if you're interested. And uh, one other um, key community building tool that we have and that we've really developed in the last year are our expert groups. So these are a form for exchange for the nodes community that bring together um, people all across uh, Europe around different topics um, that are of shared interest. These groups all meet um, at various intervals. Most of them meet once a month, others um, slightly less regularly. And you can see here, we have a number of different uh, topics that these uh, that are have dedicated expert groups for them. These range from technology expert groups that are dedicated to specific sectors, segments of imaging technology, um, 
and our other topics specific focus on um, image data, data management. We have a communications working group, a group around remote access and training, and uh, as well as user access management. So this really ranges, covers the whole range from technology developments up to uh, practical facility management um, and um, organizational issues. And these are really a forum for the node staff, the facility staff to exchange with each other, to network, uh, to learn from each other. We invite external experts, but we also really see this as a central place to share information with each other. Uh, these uh, groups are, many of them are open to invited guests outside of our node community, but they're essentially targeted to as a service for our uh, members. And um, with that, I am actually at the end of my presentation. Um, thank you very much for uh, your attention. If you, I'm very happy to take any questions you may have. Um, if you can also find more information on the resources there, and just also want to highlight that there's, um, it's been a great pleasure to present your bioimaging here, but there's a big team behind all of these efforts um, that spread across um, the, the three European countries, and you can see the whole team here. Yeah, so I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you very much for the presentation. Um, while people are thinking of questions, I did get a couple of questions from Bidu in the chat before she had to leave the meeting, but she's gonna watch our recording. So she asked me to ask these questions. Um, she said she had some bad internet, so she may have missed these details. So. Vidu wanted to know if there were other multi-country networks for other technologies. I think that is the yes. case, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So um, there's a there's a little bit of a distinction. So there are some networks that are sort of like Eurobioimaging in that they provide access to a specific group of technologies. So for example, the, in the structural biology field, so access to synchrotrons and NMR for X-ray crystallography. But then there's also a lot of these networks on research infrastructures that are more focused on sort of clustered around topic areas, such as the network for marine or the infrastructure for marine biology that then provides a wide range of different technologies, uh, but all dedicated to their use uh, within the marine biology field, for example. Okay, thank you. Um, her second question was about uh, access and funding. So I think this is from the perspective of someone outside Europe. Is it required to have a collaborator in Europe to, to access the facilities or to get access to these funding opportunities? No, no, not at all. Our funding, uh, the, the funding opportunities as well as the general access is open to everyone without any uh, pre-requirements. Okay, thank you. So feel free to unmute and ask questions. We have a little bit of time remaining. Um, I guess while people are thinking, I'll ask a question about the European Open Science Cloud that you mentioned. Um, mm -hmm. So is that something that then you also have like national versions of? Like, is there a German Open Science Cloud, et cetera? Yeah. Yes, so, so this is, um, they are not in, in all countries and in all instances similar versions of this, but there are national uh, versions. So the actually the, the whole concept of the European Open Science Cloud is a federated principle. So that the actual, the, it, the European Open Science Cloud does not itself have a lot of its own storage, cloud storage, for example, but it is a federation of the national um, infrastructures in storage and compute. Um, but bringing, making sure that these are all using the same standards and that they are interoperable and can therefore be accessed. And it doesn't matter whether your data in the end sits in Sweden or in Portugal, but you can access it similarly through or equally through the, the European Open Science Cloud. And so is this tied to policy then with the European Commission grants that they want to see the data stored in these places? Yes, yeah, so it is, it's not um, sort of targeting storage in specific um, countries or specific locations, but it is one of the key priority areas to 
drive this um, use of the open science cloud and to make sure that it is populated with data and is populated with tools for analysis. And of course, the, the sciences are, the, the special, specifically in the life sciences, we've been trying to really advance here um, to make this data sharing within the, 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 the EOS, the open science cloud um, available and to, and to uh, ensure the take up of that by, by the researchers. Because of course, sort of uh, coming from the, the, the physics and the astronomy community, they have um, more historic um, experience with using this kind of large scale uh, compute storage and infrastructure. And therefore have, they're a little bit ahead of the life sciences community when it comes to, to making use of this. So this has really been one of the focus areas of these projects to interconnect the data and for the life sciences to really put data into the cloud and to make sure that also specifically the analysis tools are available to then you do actual analysis within the cloud networks. Yeah, I think you're being kind saying that they're only a little bit behind. The physics yes. and astronomy <laughs> people have been doing this for decades and decades. Um, so there is a question from Claire in the chat. She's wondering how many people are employed with Eurobioimaging and how much the annual operating budget is. Yeah, so um, within, uh, this is uh, also again a, a two-layered um, answer to that question. So within the Eurobioimaging hub, so the, the central coordinating team, we are by now um, slightly more than, I think, 23 people, um, so some working part-time, others full-time. Um, that are employed sort of on the from your bioimaging as an essential organization within the um, 173 facilities that are part of your bioimaging. We don't have an exact number of uh, facility staff because that also fluctuates um, quite a lot over time. So we can't really track that exactly, but it is above 700 um, people that are employed overall within the wider your bioimaging network in all these different facilities. Um, yeah, that's sort of the, the, the different scales of, of, of the, the organization. Okay, thank you. Um, Marie-Claude, do you want to ask your question? Yes, um, thank you very much for a very interesting talk, Joanna. Uh, I was wondering if you would be willing to share maybe um, what is one of the major challenges that um, you faced as an organization and trying to set up something so sophisticated and uh, integrated. Thanks. Yeah, absolutely. So I think in, in the actual setup, a lot of it um, was the, the key challenges was really on the, the political and the organizational side. Um, there was very early on um, support from the national communities, from the actual facility staff and the researchers, um, seeing that this is a really good idea, this is something that is necessary and that is needed um, on this European level, but then really convincing the, the politicians um, and the funders that this is in fact a good idea and we all want to work on this together and to, to put, um, the, the funding behind this and to build this organization uh, that was really one of the key challenges and also in bringing together the biological and the biomedical communities under this one umbrella organization that have sort of very different histories, different funding models, different organizational structures um, and unifying this into one organization um, was in the, in the buildup phase, one of the, uh, one of the key challenges. And I think one of the, for at the moment now in the sort of early operational phase, one of the, our key targets and aims to, to improve on is that is the recognition by the researchers. So there are of course uh, the researchers that are closely associated, that are sort of into imaging, that are aware of your bioimaging and our services, but there's still a wide population of researchers that are not aware that the research infrastructures in general exist in Europe and your bioimaging in particular, and we are jointly as the, Europe, uh, as the European Research Infrastructure is really working on spreading the word about this concept that there is all this access that's available, there's funding that's available, and that researchers can make use of these tools. Um, because especially for you know, university students, master's students, PhD students, um, especially at the, maybe not at the, 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 the top institutions, these, they're often not aware that these opportunities are open to them and that they exist. 
And that's sort of a, a real shame. And that's sort of really one of the key aspects that we want to address by to fulfill our mission to, to democratizing access because that's our key user group. Thank you. So other questions, please feel free to unmute or type them in the chat. Hi, uh, great presentation, first of all. Thank you very much Thank for you. the information. Um, I just went on your website uh, because I wasn't, uh, I wanted to know the training. If anyone can get the training, I said that it's mostly for Europe, but if I wanted to learn about an instrument or learn more, can I go even if it's not in a study? Yes, so so the, the, the training courses, um, the, the, they are open to, to everyone. So that's one of the requirements for the training courses to, to be listed on, on our website is that the training courses are accepting applications from, 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 anyone, from anyone in the world. So yes, you could, uh, could apply for, to Excellent. get into one of the courses. Thank you so much. So maybe I can ask another question then while other people are thinking. Um, I'm curious about the image data analysis aspect. This is something you've added since you began operating in 2019, that's right? Right. So are you seeing a big uptake of this? To me, this seems like it will grow way faster than the instruments themselves at this point. So I'm just curious, like, is it doing taking off and how fast it's taking off and where you anticipate it going in the next five years or so? Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a really good question. So this is still a, a really new service that officially only started um, the fall last year. So it's been only been running for a couple of months, but we've already seen um, really significant interest. And this is um, part of why we are, we are sort of developing this together with our nodes um, to figure out this service model because I think everyone um, shared this concern that there will be a lot of uh, requests, a lot of user demand for, for this service that is way beyond the, the, serv the user demand for, for access to the instruments. Um, so far, it's, it's been a slow but steady growth. Um, so it is still um, a handleable system, but with, and it's, this is really important because we're figuring out the processes of also how the experts can collaborate across the different nodes um, together and solving these image analysis problems because sometimes the really difficult problems, it's not just um, you wanna to pull together a couple of different people who are looking at these problems from different angles to be really efficient at, at solving them. Um, so this is a really as a service model that we are something that we are really working with the community to develop this further and to, to see how we can manage uh, the delivery and the also the, the financing of these uh, services as well as the, the, the user demand. But so far we are not um, at this stage, we're not at capacity. So we can take more uh, user projects on the image analysis side. So we are not at the moment, we, we'll deal with the problem of having too many uh, user requests when, when we get there. And so this is, at this point, is it mainly fee for service? People have an image analysis problem that they want help with and they, um, pay to have expertise applied to this problem. Yes, okay. that's that is the the model, um, and it's the image analysis services are also eligible under the um, fund under the projects that fund user access. So, for example, if it's an image analysis problem that uh, will be uh, that's in a, in a cancer biology field, that would be eligible for uh, funding through the the cancer project. Um, so, okay. these are even if they are not access to technologies, they're access to services provided by the research infrastructure. So they are eligible within these, these projects. Cool, thank you. Any other questions? Okay, so I think we've exhausted our questions. So, Let's all thank the speaker again. I'm going to do my little hand clapping reaction.
There we go. And thank you. It's thank been a everyone. pleasure. And if you have any follow up question, feel free to to uh, email me and reach out. I'm very happy to answer further questions. Thank you. Great. And thank you, everyone, for coming to this month's CNSP community conversation. And as Claire mentioned, um, we're going to put this recording up on the CNSP YouTube so you can uh, share it with any colleagues that may have not been able to attend today. And uh, we'll see you next month. Thank you. Bye.